Hey YouTube, what's going on? Nice fall day here today. But we're not here to talk about the weather. <laughs> as good as it might be. Um, hope everybody's doing good. So, Alicia Clegg has asked the question. A question we've all been talking about for quite some time now. Um, and uh, she's, uh, I don't know, uh, starting to, I don't know if she's going to do a video on it or she's doing some research on it. But she put it out there on the Twitter, and I would imagine there'll be a video coming shortly about the issue of, she asked directly, are we going to have a civil war? Um, and many of us have hypothesized about this and discussed it. And I think the unequivocal answer is yes. It's just a matter of when and how that is up for debate. Um, that's the only you know question I think we're at at this point is, how is it going to happen? And uh, how's it going to go down? Um, there are too many parallels. There's too many historical examples you can compare it to, uh, to where we are and the issues that are going on and the way sides are being drawn to think that we're not going to go down that road sooner rather than later. Um, some of us would even say that's a preferred outcome to what we are going. <laughs> if we don't go to that direction, the the other direction is, is 10 times worse. Uh, you could say with, uh, the authoritarian central government. Um, but uh, yeah, go check that out. I'll put a link to her tweet. I'll go check her channel. I don't know that she's done a video on it recently. I've kind of been out of the loop on that. But uh, <clears throat> yeah, I think the answer is yes, but how we get there and where we're at is up for debate. And um, there are many parallels you can draw about how sides are being drawn and how they were drawn in the first of our uh, what what should truly be the war of northern aggression, but uh, what we call a civil war, um, and how that played out, you know, a decade beforehand with the bleeding Kansas and all the other issues and events that were going on. Um, comparatively, uh, you could say battle lines are being drawn, uh, and people are getting dug into positions that they will never reverse course, and there are multiple uh, facets that opposing sides and viewpoints they have of each other. And people aren't gonna change sides. <laughs> it's just not gonna happen. There are too many um, moral and economic implications. People are not going to switch, um, whether it's uh, the climate issue, whether it's economics, basic economics, government control and authority. Um, the family is being attacked drastically. People are not going to change their viewpoint on how a family is structured and how a family functions. And one side definitely wants to completely change how that functions. And people are not going to come out of that mindset. So uh, as people dig in, conflict will continue to arise um, as it goes forward. But I think what that tells us right now is we're in a cold war. Um, and we are in a cold action of uh, back and forth between sides with some altercations, which never really amount to anything, but it's a lot of outpouring of emotion and angst. Um, people trying to manipulate other people, uh, people trying to undermine family units, which is really going to be key to uh, kickstarting the whole thing because people are not going to let their families be destroyed. Uh, without repercussions, I guess you would say. Uh, so that's going to cause a lot of kickback, a lot of fight, uh, I think, uh, is when people, you know, at, in the public school systems in particular, or in the public square also, uh, you have to let your kids do a certain thing, or you have to live a certain way, or treat, your family has to function a certain way to be uh, accepted, <laughs> if, if not have your... Uh, children taken from you, etc. things like that, uh, what you call your kids, what, uh, you know, all those things that continue to kind of get pushed on, uh, that, uh, kids have all this, uh, autonomous, um, functionality that they can decide what, what they are at, you know, five, six, seven years old, or, uh, they can, uh, go forth and decry climate change at the age of 16 when they have no experience whatsoever, uh, emotional arguments will continue. But that uh, bigger problem 
that I think we see is what and what's different than the last time around is we're at a point that all of this stuff has happening internally while the greater picture around us is just as chaotic and only going to get worse in particular economically the economic situation that is going down is catastrophic globally not just nationally um anybody that's been paying attention which most of you do pay attention but if you haven't if you've missed a couple things um it, it, you know, we can call it global collapse, we can call it economic distress, we can call it economic change, it can be called so many different things. But whatever's going on, whatever you want to classify it as, it is going to be decisively cataclysmic in what happens on the other and how it shakes out in the future, moving forward. It's going to be catastrophically different. Um, and it could go a couple of different ways, I guess. Some would be good for us, some would be bad for us. Um, but that's not really the issue. But if you haven't been paying attention, basically we're in QE4. The Fed is buying $75 billion a day, a day of securities. The Fed is putting $75 billion a day. The Fed, the Federal Reserve Bank, your private central bank is putting in $75 billion a day into the economy, a day. Between now and I think it's October 10th. But between now and like last week, it's already started. Um, that's almost two trillion dollars, and I think the seventy-five billion was minimum. It wasn't even like, hey, we're going to purchase up to seventy-five billion. I think it was a minimum of seventy-five billion with no cap, which ties into basically our government running with no uh, budget. <laughs> we got a horse grazing out there in the distance. If you can see it moving, right straight down the road. Um, but the economic situation, <clears throat> excuse me, you've got the China deal, uh, obviously with trade impacts and tussling back and forth in the economic control of the greater economy, I think you could say. Uh, the bizarre thing is that oil is not factoring into this after this Iranian, the supposed Iranian incident in Saudi Arabia. Um, it's just almost shocking that oil prices haven't moved more than they have. I was waiting for $75 oil and that hasn't happened yet, but which tells me just like we talked about when the Straits of Hormuz incident happened, uh, oil is very manipulated. Just like JP Morgan uh, employees just got um, indicted on silver and gold price market manipulation. And I think they expanded it out to all commodity markets. So JP Morgan employees are being indicted in manipulating commodity markets uh, and they are uh, potentially flipping that the, everybody in the organization knew which people have talked about for years that JP Morgan is one of the key um, manipulators of precious metals in particular if not all commodities um, so manipulating things to favor central banking and favor uh, institutional money not uh, true market prices um and then you had the big one thing that happened in britain great britain not in great britain worldwide but in a great britain uh business thomas cook is some travel agency i guess pretty well known apparently they're pretty well known because they stranded thirty thousand people outside of the country who were on vacation because they went bankrupt overnight one company had 30,000 people traveling on it on vacations that they managed, you know, do they do with the transportation, they do the arrangements, you know, they do all that booking and stuff. And people got stranded on trips they had apparently already paid for, but because Thomas Cook had the people who do all the management of arranging the flights and the boats and everything else, uh, everybody basically got stranded overseas, places like Greece, uh, Balkan, you know, all over the continent as well as other countries outside of the EU uh, on vacation because this country went bankrupt. 30,000 people. That's just an instance of one one business going bankrupt. I think that's a good, a good indicator of things you can expect to see moving forward. And also <laughs> be careful about what you say when you say your trip is paid for. Well, apparently it's not because it didn't include return trip. Or even if the return trip was paid for, there was no way to execute it somehow. 
uh, which just blows my mind that you could pay for a vacation, but yet not make it home. Uh, very concerning there. So you have all this big overarching economic crisis worldwide over the top of what we have going on here, which is only going to make things worse. And now today, they're, again, once again, they're floating this impeachment thing. And that's only going to continue to draw battle lines, even though people shouldn't pick a side. They will. And I do want to remind people this Ukrainian business with supposedly Uncle Joe, Uncle Joe Biden uh, was uh, doing some shady business in Ukraine. And Trump told the Ukrainian prime minister to, hey, go investigate this guy. He's doing some shady business in your country. Remember this, Ukraine is a undermined puppet of the European Central Bank. That's what started this Ukrainian mess a decade ago. It's not quite been a decade, but way back when. It was like 2013. It's been like seven years, six, seven years. When this whole Ukrainian mess started, we told you, it's because the Ukrainian, the Ukrainians said no to the European Central Bank undermining their fiscal system to bailouts and the industrial segment that was controlled by Russian interests got booted for the favorability of the EU uh, bailout for Ukrainian farmers, essentially. And the EU won that through the upheaval and unrest of all the different factions and the documented uh, nationalist groups that came out to resist, quote unquote, and uh, protest and everything else. Um, to kick the Russian influences out and Russia fought back and took their national security interest into heart with, by taking the Crimean Peninsula once again. Um, but all that and all up till now, if Trump knows the guy well enough to, Hey, say, Hey, take check out Joe Biden. they both are in bed with the central banks. Just know that this, whatever central civil war, that uh, people are trying to uh, predict just remember it won't end well if it's the people versus each other when in the end it's all going to come down to the government versus the people um because the government's going to crack down hard that's my theory at least so go check out alicia and her question maybe she'll do a good video highlighting her uh, thoughts on it but uh pain trains coming folks even if it is a nice fall day you have a good day live free